Uh, today's sermon is titled, Who Told You? Who Told You? And our anchor text is the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 11. But before we dive right into the word of God, let's anchor it in prayer. So let's approach the throne of grace and ask the spirit of truth to reveal his word to us today. Bow with me as we pray. Father, we give you praise and we appreciate you for a time like this, a time to be fed with your word. Lord, let us hear your voice, even as we go through your word in the name of Jesus. And let your word find its place in our very lives, and our very heart, in the name of Jesus. That we may all grow in you, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Who told you? Who told you? And then when we consider that, our anchor text, which is Genesis chapter 3, verse 11, which simply reads, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, And he said, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? The question, who told you? came about after the lie that the devil sold to Adam and Eve. God told them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, but they did. Who told you that you're naked? That was the question God asked them. But they were truly naked. So it's not like they weren't and God is telling them, hey, what's going on? But it's more of what led to that point at which they became naked. And remember that story. They hid from God. When they heard that God was in the garden, they hid from him because they were naked. And when we consider our lives, when things happen, sometimes we hide from God instead of understanding what we need to do to embrace God. Because God whom they were hiding from is the one who clothed them. Because when we read further into verse 21, we would see that God is the one who provided clothing to them. God, even in the midst of their sin, God is the one who still made provision for them. So things might be happening in your life. And things might be in a certain way. That is true. But that's not your story. Adam and Eve's story is not a story of nakedness. But it's a story of being covered by the Most High God. So I want you to keep that story in mind as we go through today's sermon. Who told you? And I want to bring it right into our very lives to have an understanding of how that very phrase has permeated into our world today. Who told you? Now, concerning this kind of question, you know the phrase fact checking. It's a common phrase in today's world. Because there's so much stories and incomplete or incorrect stories floating out there, there's a need to fact check every story that comes your way. But you know that fact checking has been around for thousands of years. Fact checking in terms of when the devil seeks to lie or take a lie or sell you a lie. There's a need to check that with the living God. And that has been happening for thousands of years. Fact checking for you as a Christian is to check against God's word, to test every spirit. You have to fact check the things of life, the things that, remain, that, that connect you to God. Do not be sold. On a lie. Now, the source of truth is particularly important. The source of 
all truth is God. Plain and simple. There's no other way of putting it. The source of all truth is God. Because in the book of John, Jesus made us to understand that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So every truth is from God. It doesn't matter whether it's science, whether it's medicine, whether it, regardless of the topic. Every truth is from God. So which means our fact checking must be against what God has said. But never forget that. Do not never, ever, ever believe any contrary report. Now, we need to examine some fundamental truth concerning you, concerning me, concerning every child of God. Now, if you're not a child of God, understand one thing. There is always room for you in the kingdom of the Most High God. But you need to take that step of basically confessing that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the mighty king, is your Lord and Savior. Once you confess Christ as Lord and Savior, you are indeed born again. And then as a child of the most high God, the truth of God becomes effective in your life. So don't waste the time. Approach the throne of grace with, with a repentant heart and God will embrace you in Jesus name. So there are some fundamental truths that we need to understand versus the lie that has permeated that truth. And there are five or six of them that we'll go through today um, that I believe are fundamental to each and every one of your lives. And the first one I want us to take a look at as, is that who told you that your past has fixed your future? That your past has fixed your future? That is a lie that is being sold to many. That what has happened has already fixed your future. But the truth is, what has happened is taking you on a particular path. But it is your current situation that fixes your future. So if the past is taking you on a particular journey, on a particular line, if you continue on that path, yes, that defines your future. But the present always gives you an opportunity to take a turn that your future may be different from what your past has dictated. You're going on a journey. Your current situation is that you can make a turn. So if the journey you're on, if that path is not the right path, then your current life, in your current day, you can make a decision to turn away from that path. So no longer is your past directing where you're headed, but your current, your present life is what's directing your future. Always think of it in those terms. And I want us to consider the life of Jabez in the book of First Chronicles chapter 4. The book of First Chronicles chapter 4. We will only look at a couple of verses, verse 9 and 10. The book of First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And again, I read from the New King James Version. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. His past says he's full of sorrow. That's what Jabez means in Hebrew, full of sorrow, sorrowful. That's his past. 
But at a point in time, he's present. He decided, I don't want to continue on this path. I need to change it. And he approached the Most High God and laid his request before God. And his life was changed. <laughs>